But before that, let me just say some few things. One, uh, as a minister, I have been extremely patient and accommodative to the union. My inclusion being uh, having been ordered by the court because matters HR are my responsibility across government. And I've been extremely patient and walked this journey with the union. But three things really for me are of major regret. One, I am not used to dishonesty. I cannot understand how you go for a meeting, you agree on one thing, two hours later, people change goalpost of what you agree. For me, that is an extremely strange territory. I, 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 it's for me, it is really unfortunate that people as educated as doctors can, can, can really lack honesty to that level, people whom we entrust with our lives. My second regret is all of you, media, and the country have been saying again and again that government needs to respect court orders. And now I was expecting the public, and especially you in the media, to equally hold the doctors to the same threshold of responsibility that you hold us. How can court orders be flouted, that the, that the strike is suspended, not once, not twice, three times? But if it was government, that could have been a different story. I did not find equal voices from the media and from the public, from civil society, that keeps asking government, why are you not respecting court orders? Why are you not holding these people if we want to have a country that is ruled by the rule of law? My third regret is I have been around several cabinet ministers for health. I was around Mailu, I was around Macharia, I was around Mutahi um, Kagwe. And in those regimes, there were industrial actions. But for those ministers, matters were restricted to uh, the issues at hand. But for my sister here, it is the first time I've seen a lot of personalization of the issues. Is it because she's a woman? And if we want to, you know, because I've seen a lot of, you know, uh, disproportionate treatment between this particular cabinet secretary and the previous cabinet secretaries. And again, even the women folk of this country are not speaking about it. And for me, that's unfortunate. Anyway, I digress. Uh, I want to say as follows. One, we know, and last week we were in the wage bill conference, and I did state there, one million of us, one million people, public servants, consuming over 50% of our tax revenues. And we said that it's not me or you or the President of the Republic of Kenya. It is, there's something wrong. There's something terribly wrong when one million people take half of our tax revenues and then the 53 million people take another one. And this is, we have committed as a government to nothing but honesty and to say the truth, no matter how unpalatable. That is why, if the doctors think that we are against them, this week, on Friday, I will be moving to cabinet to present a, a proposal, a recommendation, which if cabinet approves, all government workers, at least on the national government, COG can speak for county government. All government workers, from driver to cleaners to everybody, will be converted to contract. There is not going to be anybody permanent anymore. If you want to be permanent, show me that even on earth, your tenure is permanent. We are all on contract, even on this earth. We are all on contract. As we do that, we are going to convert them from permanent and pensionable to to contract, but still pensionable. So that now, our service, I am on contract. President of this country is on contract. Governor of Kirinyaga is on contract. We are all going to be on contract because we have to focus on matters productivity. Two, let me mention a bit on the issue of uh, internship. Uh, in the month of um, uh, March, we recruited from Public Service Commission 8,600 interns to work across government. Now, uh, two things. One, these, these people, these 8,600, are on a salary of 25,000 Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. 25,000. Two, 
Once we, uh, when we uh, advertised for these positions, 58,000 people applied. 8,000 people is an improvement from 3,000, which, which uh, last year. And I did effort to ensure that, that we get resources to increase to 8,000. But still, 50,000 graduates, people who went to school, and you don't want to tell me this degree is more important than the other degree, could not get internship of 25,000. They would be very happy to get 25,000, let alone the 70,000 that we are talking about here. I know I'm saying this, this matter is in court, our hands are tied, but again, I am going to have public participation on this issue of an internship policy that cuts across board for everyone. Uh, finally, uh, let me say that this circus is over. You saw here, you are here with us three days. We come here, 47 governors with Bedera. We are here, 14% of the cabinet is here, by the way. 14% of the cabinet sitting here. Not one day, two days, three days. The amount of humiliation that you've been taken through by, by the union is just unimaginable. It's on another level. So this is the end of the circus. Employers are here. 47 governors would go and do what they do best. KNH is here. KUTRH is here. MTRH is here. Those are the employers. And we are saying that because we have been entrusted with the lives of Kenyans, as a responsible government, we cannot discuss in perpetuity. So we will do whatever it takes to plug in the gaps, and we want to tell the public that all good things must have a sacrifice. And as I finish, uh, as a Minister for Public Service, I'm in charge of payroll. And I want to say that uh, the union, I cannot, I cannot continue working for free for a union which is not respecting court orders. So I've instructed my payroll people not to remit the dues for this particular union. Because I, I'll be abetting crime, and I'll be abetting you know, disrespect for court orders. Enough is enough. Thank you.